Great to have you here. And a couple of comments I have to ask Jerry. This is the first time I've got to visit with you guys since the uh, day in Dallas. And um, I just want to go back to, um, you know, everybody gets recruiting and great things going on. And, and uh, I'm always going to, I think I want to, for the rest of my career, always talk about our student athletes because I just, uh, to first of all, they're our best recruiters. We just put together a great class. And Ezekiel Elliott, I found out, is probably our best recruiter. And Michael Thomas might be number two. And that makes you feel good as a coach. And uh, our players started work in August. Uh, they had uh, no day off for Thanksgiving because we play our rival. And that's a pretty important game around here. And then you go to Christmas, and your mind's really on playing Alabama. But we gave them a few days off. And then uh, every other student, every other student athlete other than two teams gets that week or 10-day hiatus where you get your bodies right, get your minds right, and they go. And uh, our kids actually had two days of missed classes. So I'm trying to visualize that professor actually marking down an absentee to a, a player. And Ohio State is 30 ACT average in that classroom. And so I just saw our players today, at, here we go again, 5 o'clock in the morning, uh, the alarm goes, and 6 a.m., the whistle blows, and we're going. And I just stare at those guys and to think that the, our president of the NCAA uh, allowed them to get financial reimbursement to go play the college football playoff, that's the right thing to do. And I, I'm gonna, you're going to hear that probably six or 7,000 more times out of Ohio State that we need to continue to do the right thing, uh, which I, I, we have very strong opinions about that as well. But I think everybody needs to understand the workload that's put on when you start saying let's add, and then when someone says let's add an eighth or 10th or ninth or 15th or 20 game playoff, obviously we have some strong opinions around here about that as well because we did it and we were part of it. Uh, so don't, don't forget this, even on signing date, uh, I know one thing around here, we don't forget the effort that they did to uh, make history. And you can see there's a 2014 national championship sign over there that these players did, which uh, we're all uh, uh, deeply indebted to them for that. I uh, also want to thank our recruiting staff, Mark Pant, led by Mark Pantone. He's an ace. He's a, a guy who's been with me a long time. He's a grinder. Um, we put together a very good class, and his support staff uh, uh, did a fine job. And then our coaching staff did a great job. Uh, keeping this thing going. Um, you have uneventful and eventful signing dates. Uh, we've had a couple uneventfuls where it kind of, hey, these guys say they're coming, they're coming, and you move on. And then you have the other ones where it's normally this way, where there's one or two. We had five at 11 o'clock last night where unsure where they were going. And that makes for a bad night for myself and a handful of our coaches that were involved with them. And I, I used to do it in the middle of the floor with a sleeping bag. I now moved to my daughter's room. She's no longer there. She's in college. And so I walk into her room and I plug my phone in and try to zzz, and you hear that darn thing going and going. And I looked at my clock one time, it was 12.10, and I'm still talking to Stan Drayton about Mike Weber. And we're trying to get a hold of him. And, and so it was a very eventful night. Uh, we don't get everyone. We didn't get everyone we wanted. We, we battled, battled really hard. And, um, but at the end of the day, the five jumped in the boat today. And the five were uh, Isaiah Prince, KJ Hill, Mike Weber, Josh Alibi and uh, that lefty, yeah, Torrance Gibson. So that was a uh, uh, little anxiety around here during the morning, and uh, our guys did a good job. Uh, a couple comments about the class. Uh, did very well in the state of Ohio. Uh, our linebackers, I, I, I'm really excited about that. I think that's uh, Luke Fickle has really uh, done a very, very good job in the last three years of building it back up to the Ohio State standards that um, – I think was void when we first got here because of injuries and because of a variety of things. But you're looking now and you're seeing a Josh Perry, you see Raquan McMillan, you see Dante Booker, a Darren Lee, and you're starting to see these athletes coming up that are on all special teams. There was a time here a couple of years ago we had linebackers weren't involved in the kicking game. And it wasn't because they're not supposed to be. It's because we just, for whatever reason, they were not. Now they're all over the place. And you look at these three guys that are coming in, uh, Nick Connor, Justin Hayer, and Jerome Baker, they were the exact kind of body types, mentality, people that you want. Also, the offensive line, we were very, we don't have the long, tall, long guys. Uh, we're 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, 6'5", six, 6'9", six, 6'5", six, and 6'7", are walking through the doors now. So there's, out of those are three or four tackles that we really need. We're really short at that position, especially with Kyle Dotson not uh, being allowed to play football anymore because of his injury. Um, so I'll answer some questions for you. Uh, but uh, once again, I uh, wanted to please don't forget uh, about conversations about the current student athletes and the uh, 
uh, what they're, someone would, uh, you want to do a great story? Do a story from August until January 15th and what a student athlete does, because most American, most people don't understand that. They see a kid play against Oregon and say, wow, that's kind of cool. They don't realize we were out of scout team players. If we had to practice one more day, we had to go against each other because we were out of scout team. There's no scout team. It's over. So for the, all those people on all the committees making decisions, they need to hear those decisions because it's, you just have to do the right thing by the players. I'll answer any questions for you. Urban, I asked this of you, acknowledging that you're the guy that put Cam Newton and John Brantley a year behind Tim Tebow, but you get two big-time quarterbacks in this class. You have four great quarterbacks on the roster. Have you ever had a situation like this or seen a situation like this at that position? And then if you could also just comment on, on Burrow and Gibson. I love Joey Burrow. Uh, he was a guy that was uh, kind of under the, you know, Tom Herman. We kind of, I don't want to say rejected because we didn't reject him. We just kind of is he what we want because he, he's growing up. And the unfortunate thing right now, all this early recruiting is pushing, you're letting between your sophomore and junior year and your junior and seniors when kids grow up and they're, I'm watching my son do it right now, how big he's getting and strong he's getting. So Joey Burrow is right on schedule. And uh, Tom Herman went down there and, and um, you know, he wasn't, I don't know if he's highly rated or not, but I just remember uh, he sent me and he's screaming into his phone, I guess an iPhone, as he's watching this kid throw. And he goes, I found your next Alex Smith, you know, and, and you meet the kid and his family, and it's just A1A. He's a competitor. He wins. He wins in football. He wins in basketball. And his mom and dad, he's a coach's son. So we're real impressed with him. Torrance, I didn't know very well. He came in. And uh, um, you know, the thing I asked Torrance is just please don't penalize us because our play, guys play real well. You know, every, I went through other rosters. on other, Everybody's got three or four quarterbacks. If you don't, you're really struggling. But everybody's got three or four. Our three or four happen to play really well. Don't hold that against us. Because, you know, Cardell might leave after next year. He almost left this year, I guess. And, and Braxton's out. So you're down to one, maybe two. You know, don't hold that against us. Coming to P for the spot. Because you go from Braxton to, to uh, Kenny Guyton to JT Barrett to Cardo Jones. Don't penalize the Ohio State Buckeyes because all four played really well. And just the depth, real quick, Urban, have you ever had six guys of that caliber? No. No. We'll discuss down the road, I guess. Urban, you're coming off of the national championship. If, if I'm Mike Weber and I'm in Michigan and I've got Michigan pulling at me to, mm. to stay there, what does Urban Meyer tell me at 11 o'clock the night before signing day to, to get me to come here? Well, I got a lot of credit. You know, he, he's a guy that's been here a bunch. Uh, he's been committed, and, and I've, we've all been down that road. And, and kids leave. You know, Ezekiel Elliott was a great – that's his brother now. I mean, I hear him talk, and I heard the term brother. And Zeke's our best recruiter. That does not happen without Zeke Elliott. Zeke Elliott's mother played at Missouri. His father played at Missouri. Uh, his mother was a track star at, at Missouri, and uh, he went through the same transition. And so when they, they weren't talking about the yankees Red Sox robbery or something, they talking about how that is, the pressure, when I know I want to do this, but what about this? And uh, there were former players going to his house. There was, uh, uh, you know, NFL guys from the rival, you know, just trying to do what they're doing. And uh, to be able to maintain it, as of 11 o'clock last night, I wasn't sure what he was going to do. And even at nine, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock this morning, we all weren't sure. And then up until about an hour before it announced, uh, we weren't sure. So what your, your question is, what do we tell them? I mean, the, the last two tailbacks are as good as anybody in America statistically. We have a fantastic offensive line, and we believe in a tailback. And it's pretty, it's not theory. It's, I mean, it's real. You watch it on film. Yeah, Urban, as you look at these offensive linemen, what, what do they bring to the table more than, more than anything else? I mean, is it you've gotten six this year, five last year. Do you feel like the cupboard has been, I guess, restocked? Well, we made some mistakes when we first got here. We, uh, you know, we, we had a couple guys not work out. And uh, Coach Warner is a magician as far as developing the Reed Fraggles and Daryl Baldwins and taking guys that really never played football and making them NFL-type players. And he's one of the best I've ever been around. I've, I've never seen anything like that. Um, but we were very, I mean, we were holding our breath this year because we just, we were down to the nubs as far as what was left. And uh, we needed this kind of haul. Now in there, there's a couple guys more game ready than the others just because of the, the amount of experience they've had and the quality of competition, those type of things. But you need, you know, offense linemen, that's the one position, a little bit like D-line. It takes a couple years to get going. But they're long and they're athletic and they're tackle type bodies, three or four of those guys, which we, we just don't have. You're up there, you're at midnight, 1 o'clock, you're talking to Stan Drain. You're, is that still fun to you? How would you describe no. what that is like? <laughs> that last no. 
24, that was funny when I was 27 years old. It's what? Yeah, it was fun when you were 27 years old and you're 50 now. It's fun when you get them and you smile and you laugh and Drayton looks like I do today, just like someone hit him with a bat. Uh, but what's fun is when they're very good people and you can, you know, you can bleed with them a little bit because you know what they're going through. And, they're, you know, once again, you're talking about Mike Weber, man. He's a great kid. You can talk about uh, uh, Isaiah Prince. When you guys get to know him, there's not a better guy than that. And then K.J. Hill, I really didn't know. That was mostly Chris Ash until the end. And you're talking about a very intelligent player that wants doing it for the right reasons and a very good family. So when you're talking about it's fun when you're dealing with that kind of people. One last thing. Do you ever chalk it up, check it up, check mark? You've just beaten that new coach. For a guy he really coveted, if you understand what I'm saying. No, you don't have time to do that. Uh, I think we, we do like keep that? score against the rival in everything we do. And uh, and they're great recruiters. They always have been. The previous staff was great recruiters. And, and uh, I mean, that's that's gone on for long before us and will take place long after us. But you absolutely, you keep score of that one. Far left. Rusty? Um, Urban, how – different with this class have been without a national championship? Did you gain people, or how much of a bounce did you get? I think we'll find that out after we, you know, I, I certainly 16, you'd seen a, a jolt, uh, and that's going to help us. Uh, it was a, I tell people it was like a 30-day infomercial. Uh, it's, we didn't really turn many's, you know, you know, I thought maybe that might happen, but that really didn't happen. Uh, I think Isaiah Prance, KJ, our two, maybe Torrance, it really helped us, but, you know, I think Matt Burrell was still coming, and uh, Mikey Weber that was, I don't think he came because we won a national championship. I think a little bit, you know, like that ESPN hard knocks thing that we did a couple years ago, it just gets, you know, the scarlet and gray in front of everybody in a positive light. You know, sometimes things happen and it's not in a positive light. Uh, so anytime it's positive, you know, go pay for positive advertisement for 30 days and see what that looks like. And that's basically what it was. And one more thing, uh, the whole field of recruiting and particularly announcing uh, you know, the first signing date and everything. I just wondered if you if you could look into a crystal ball, what do you think this is going to be like in 10 years? Or are we still going to be under the same format where everybody... I have mixed emotions about that. I've been on committees and been, we've been asked that every year at the American Football Coach Association. We'll probably get... Uh, we have Big Ten meetings next week. I'm sure that will come up. I think the SEC, when I was in the SEC, had a great model, but then I start thinking, you know, my daughters went through it. And I'm just trying to visualize, you know, People, there's no visit policies. You can't do this. You can't do this. If someone, imagine telling your coach your daughter can't go visit this school. I look and show she can't. Sure she can. These kids have it. They're 17, 18 years old. They're getting a plethora of offers and opportunities. It's done when the person signs that dotted line. So the more I'm thinking about it, even though we had to battle and you said, is it fun at midnight on? No, it's not fun. But at the end of the day, that human being, that young person gets to pick whatever school they want to pick. And now they can get, gather as much information as they possibly can get their hands on. Because I don't think we get K.J. Hill. I don't think we get Isaiah Prince. I don't think we get on an early signing period, I'm trying to think who else, uh, maybe not Mike. You know, I think he was committed by then. But So I, I, I kind of like the model. and I, Not that my voice matters too much, but I think uh, I, I'd be disappointed if it changed. Back row middle. All right. Urban, um, with a guy like Torrance, um, who was a you know, huge part of your guys' class, it was a really long, drawn-out process with him from the beginning when he was a junior. You guys got in on him to you know, maybe lulls in the middle of the recruitment, then the quarterbacks do what they do. I mean, how much work does it take maybe to get one specific guy like that in comparison to some of the other guys where you know, they're from Ohio and now? I mean, can you detail a little bit about just the journey? Sure. Uh, that's a great question because there, there are those that tear up and say, my grandfather knew uh, Woody Hayes and I want to play for Ohio State, where do I sign? And there's the other ones that if you put a stopwatch on the amount of time you've spent with them, it's out of, uh, out of control. And uh, be quite honest with you, it's, you know, as much as you do like the person that grew up at Buckeye and says, I'll do anything to be Ohio State Buckeye, and then all of a sudden you go get a guy out of South Florida that, you know, he just more is a fit that you have to really grind and work to go get. It's probably, it's more, you know, it's, I don't say gratifying, but to be able to go get a guy uh, so the amount of time on Torres was ridiculous, especially towards the end. Uh, but he seemed always to be a natural fit offensively, and, and, he, and he just liked the way Ohio State did their stuff. Um, kind of follow the question on something entirely different, but when it comes to pace. Uh, it comes to what? Pace and putting together pace. a class. Sometimes you get eight at the beginning. Sometimes you don't have any until July. Do you guys have a preferred way of 
how you want to assemble it? Is it little by little? Do you like yeah, it I, little? I like the little by little, and I catch, you know, one around here because everybody wants to, like right now, if we said hey, it took everybody who wanted to commit, it'd be done. And I just, I just seen people fail. You know, you get stuck in, you know, I think uh, the, head, the coaches deserve a right to see a player play a senior year, certainly have them in camp and get to know them a little bit. You know, there's some people that tried to commit during a championship game that we don't know, and I hope it works, and, but I just don't know them yet. And um, so I, I'd rather be much slower and, you know, a couple here, a couple there, a couple here, and then always have a few left at the end. Um, you always say that you don't recruit kids to redshirt. You want them to play right away. I'm just wondering, I mean, you're coming off a national title and you had a very young team. Um, what do you envision competition like next year with this group coming in? And is it going to be more difficult for this group to maybe crack the two deep, uh, given what you have coming back? I hope so. I mean, that means you got a good team. Uh, you, obviously, you don't, if you got a team that's, you know, you got a bunch of freshmen, true freshmen coming and taking, you're probably getting your tail kicked in a little bit. So, uh, I don't know. I, I think, you know, there's there's nothing quite like having a very good player behind the guy in front of you either to make you show up and go every day. There's nothing like it. And that makes their grades better because, oh, you screw around in the classroom, you're out. You know, one of the great things Coach Drayton did was, uh, I guess, Zeke missed a couple classes, and the next thing, Curtis Samuel scores a touchdown and starts the game. So that's the perfect world that every coach wishes they had, but that doesn't happen very often. But next year will be a very competitive group. As you, like you mentioned, there's a bunch of starters coming back, but there's a bunch of guys that just signed a piece of paper that are going to go try to get a spot. And they have every right. If they're better than their player, I don't, we won't really worry about what you've done in the past. The best players know we, we, compete, we uh, try to create competition at everything, from the classroom to the off-season workout to the summer workouts, and obviously during spring and summer. <clears throat> Coach, everybody wants to be a great uh, <clears throat> closer. I mean, a salesman, a DB, whatever. You went five for five last night. What do you attribute that to? Well, there's, we missed one a couple of days earlier, though. A guy that I loved, you know, that Port Augustine, the, the tremendous kid. So, um, I think, uh, once again, I think it was our players. Well, I don't think, I know. But Mike Weber's not at Ohio State without uh, Zeke Elliott. Just not even. I don't think it happens. I don't think. I know it doesn't happen. So I attribute it to you believe in what you're selling. Um, it's a really good place. A lot of momentum, and our players right now are bought in. You know that's the cool thing. You walk out there, Matt drills this morning. You see in the weight room and the attendance. You know, it's been great with uh, Coach Marotti. I mean, there's places. There's a lot of momentum right now at Ohio State. Could you uh, detail the process by which you got Prince and uh, K.J. Hill? Because obviously those are the two guys that were not committed. Prince was a battle. Prince committed to another school and then uh, a wonderful family. Father's from Trinidad. Um, man, just a great, great, great people. Uh, was a fit. And then we went to see him. Felt great. Home visit. And then he made a commitment. Then we, he came back for a visit and was blown away. And, and then it was a street fight until signing date. Uh, just, I think he's a great fit, great player that a lot of people wanted. K.J. Hill was interesting. He committed early. He was on our radar a long time ago. Chris Ash knew his family. I didn't know his family at all. Uh, kept telling us what great people they are. Uh, he's a receiver. He liked what we do, how we do things. And uh, I think the national championship helped in that one a little bit. You know, he saw the, you know, we saw we lost two upperclassmen too. And he watched very closely with how we do use the receivers. And, and I think that's why he jumped in more than anything else, just the the actual receiver play. I think that you're a few over the 85 limit as of now. Um, how do you think you'll resolve that? Oh, there's a couple injury issues that we're dealing with. And uh, uh, right now, I think we're only at 85 or 86. I don't have that number in front of me. Back row left. Kevin? Coach, I wanted to ask you about two guys in particular, one being Rashad Barry. Some people were talking D end. Some were talking tight end. He's listed at tight end. Is that a situation that have you always looked at him as a tight end, or did the O coaches went out over the D coaches and, and he's tight end until further notice? And then secondly, Damon Arnett out of St. Thomas Aquinas, the school that you know very well. Joey came out of there. You probably knew it very well when you were in Florida. How important is it to just continue to have great success out of uh, St. Thomas Aquinas? Yeah, that's a great. We will take one every year if they give them to us. You know, that's a that's a great school. But Rashad is that's all Stan Drayton. Coach Drayton really. Does a great job in Cleveland and that whole northern, northern, central, northern, northeastern part of all the state, and just smothers himself in there. And he started talking about Rashad a while back. I don't know Rashad that well. 
Uh, but I guess he just, you know, he's one of those typical guys that just ballooned up and and uh, is he going? We, we, I think we put him at tight end. We'll see what happens. You know, we didn't know what we're quite we're going to do with uh, um, our man Sam Hubbard because his body kept changing and all that. So uh, I, I like, I really like this kid. I like his family. Got to spend a little time with him last weekend. But Stan Drayton's like doing cartwheels for this guy because he's seen him play basketball and knows the coach, watches his kid develop, and he thinks he's one of the stars of this class. Just what you saw, somebody came yeah, well, we had a decommit, and uh, 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 we, we had some injuries in the secondary a little bit. You know, right now there's a chance, and I'll let everybody know, there's a chance Armani Reeves might not play. So that's when I talk about the injuries because of concussions, and that's still being evaluated. And so that's a big priority, especially his size. He's tall, he's athletic, he's a strong guy. Uh, kind of developed in the last year, and uh, he was a must-get, especially after we had a decommit. Urban, from what we know about the roster, it's, it seems more that you're like at 90 or 91. Are there any more that you can talk about? I think about? Ron Tanner, you know, well, you got to give me a couple days and I'll get with you because I've been running around this country. I want to give you false information. But I think Ron Tanner and, and Armani are two off the top of my head that won't be able to play anymore. Okay. Bogart, Bogart can't. Trey Johnson can't. So Bogart's definitely done. Yeah. He's at three ACLs. And how much, how much are you aware of that with your roster management, and how much are you willing to? I mean, I know you talked about that. You know, you're losing guys at the end of the season, and you're short on bodies. How much are you willing to push it on? You know, trying to max out, make sure you're maxed out at 85. But maybe I'm never really oversigned. You know, we uh, we don't go two over, three over. You know, and I'm Gene and I have really never had those conversations because we just don't do that. Uh, but there's a couple guys when you're just not sure that they can continue playing. You know, there's some guys that have two ACL injuries and. And so you have to just be aware. So you're very, how aware am I of the roster? About as well as you can be. But there's also the truth that you don't know for the next couple of weeks, couple of months, until this injury, what happens. So you have to prepare, but you also can't do the unthinkable, and that's to be stuck with 87 scholarship players come June or July. And did you see the cost of attendance issue? Is that something that came up with any kids in this class, or is that for the just in terms of you're going to be, you know, you're going to have. I'm embarrassed to say this. I have no idea. I have heard that for the last years. I don't so know what that means. That's a really no. Discussion at this point. no. And the last question, uh, Jeff. Uh, you mentioned a couple of times how much you like to be able to evaluate some of these guys into their senior years. And there's some guys like Brashad in this class and uh, Robert Landers out of Wayne that really have big senior years. Devon. Really, yeah, yeah, really able to kind of push and earn that scholarship. I and mean, what do you think those guys add just having that fuller picture of a guy as you were able to see him? Well, less chance year. for error because you get to see him play as a senior and less buyer's remorse because you get to watch them. And I, I wish that's the way it used to be. You know, it used to, when I first started coaching, recruiting started in December of the kid's senior year. And now it starts their sophomore year. And we had to make a decision that we, because my first, if you remember our first couple years, we fought that and fought it. And finally we had to give in a little bit to get in the game. Because, you know, the days of making a guy come to camp are, are over. And uh, we've, we've accepted that. That's disappointing because I think every, we should have the right to do that. Darren Lee, for example, if he doesn't come to camp, he's not at Ohio State. Um, and there's other players like that.